Self-care truly is a journey. It's a journey of listening to yourself, understanding what you need to nourish your body, soul, and mind, and getting in touch with your inner wisdom. I've been having conversations with different people in my life, people who have inspired me to live differently, to not read somebody else's script, but instead to trust my own intuition and follow my own flow. It's always a work in progress, and I find that I'm in good company with people who are walking this similar path. I recently had the opportunity to have a conversation with one woman who inspired me to live my path of purpose. Her name is Melanie Middigs. She teaches business chakra philosophy. She's a presenter, she's a facilitator, she's a mentor, and she works with women around the world, helping them manifest their vision for their life. Melanie lives in Bali. I'm here on Vancouver Island. So it was a long distance conversation, but we felt like we were in the same room. This conversation is an important one. We talk about what it means to be a woman entrepreneur today, what it means to take care of ourselves in the process of manifesting our dreams, and Melanie even shares a bit about her own struggles with addiction. I hope you find this conversation as interesting and inspirational as I did. Enjoy. For the best advice on self-care and personal empowerment, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to get notified when I release a new video each Thursday. Melanie, it is so good to see you. You too. It's been so long and thank you so much for the invitation to come talk to you today. Oh my goodness, thank you for accepting the invitation and for being here. Um, everyone, I am beyond, beyond excited and grateful to have Melanie Middigs with us here today. Melanie, I met Melanie back in 2015, 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, during an advanced yoga teacher training at the Yoga Barn in Ubud, Bali, Indonesia. And Melanie has been rocking it out as a solopreneur for quite some time. I'm going to let her share with you, but you know, Melanie has so many different components to her business. She's a psychosomatic therapist. She's an entrepreneur. She's a mentor. I argue that you're a solopreneur, really. Um, <laughs> she's a teacher of chakra philosophy for business and the modern world. She's a speaker. She's a futurist. She's a, a facilitator. She is a bright light shining in this. I mean, she's got the, the gamut of titles that we could just rattle off. But I also consider Melanie somebody who has served as an inspiration to me. And when I met Melanie on the yoga teacher training, you were doing face reading and chakra philosophy and talking about how the chakra system and the energetic body relates to how we show up in our businesses for both not only others, but also for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take this opportunity to chat with Melanie about her work, about her self-care journey, but also have you be just as inspired by her as I am. So Melanie, welcome again. And um, if you want to add anything to that introduction, just a little bit about who you are and what you're doing currently, I would love it. Wow. Thank you for that intro. That was like an amazing introduction. So thank you so much, <laughs> Heather. <laughs> I just realized I'm like, I am actually doing quite a number of things, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what am I up to at the moment? I think for me, my work has evolved since we even met, you know, and I think that's what happens uh, when we're bringing our work and our gifts to the world. It's a forever ever evolving um, system that's sort of taking place. Um, I'm really excited because the business chakra system, I've been focusing that on helping entrepreneurs, but I've just had my first corporate gig come through just this week. And it just really reflects to me how much the world is waking up. And, you know, these, because when I first started six years ago, it was always my vision to 
wake up the corporate world. It's like, we are not robots. We have feelings, you know, when we connect to them, when we connect to our body, uh, we can really hear the, um, the whispers that will help our decision making in life and in business, you know. Um, but back then, the corporate world was kind of like, what? Face reading chakras? Like, what the hell? And now I've just been invited next week to Singapore to go, you know, share my work with a, a group of staff there. So who are just going through a change. So it's like, it's massive. Like, I feel like the world is truly waking up and it's really, really great to see. That, well, congratulations. That is huge. <laughs> and I think it's a testament to how much time and heart and soul and energy you have poured into cultivating this work. And I have to say, if anybody walks their talk, it, it is you because you have directly applied what you teach others to your own business. And I, I love the way you started, Melanie. Can you share with people how you started the face reading? Because I just think you're, everybody, if you want to hear an evolution story of a business, this, this is a great one. So Mel, would you mind just kind of taking us on that little journey of yours? Oh, wow. Yeah. So I learned uh, how to do face reading through my psychosomatic therapy training. And it was like, as soon as I learned, I was like, this is my gig. Like, this is what I'm here to do. And Fortunately, a couple of weeks after my second round of training, um, there was a mind body spirit festival in Brisbane. And so I put up my hand straight away and I was like, can I come and do face reading at your stall? And they're like, yeah, sure. Like, and I was like, why isn't everybody else putting their hand up? It's like, come on, let's go, you know? <laughs> and um, so I went, dove straight in. So that was three days. And I read about 60 people's faces over that weekend. And um, I was totally nervous though, like, don't get me wrong. So I'm like, I've just learned this. Oh my God. But it was like, I knew I just had to immerse myself completely in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the festival finished and I was like, well, how am I going to continue this? Like there's only a mind body, mind body spirit festival once a year. Um, so I decided to create my own market stall. And so I went out with my tent <laughs> and I remember painting the signs and like, I've still got the photos and I just look back and I go, oh my gosh, like, you know, um, and I had a market stall on a Wednesday and a Saturday in Brisbane. And I knew that I had to do it to keep my practice up. And I also knew that I had to do it in terms of getting the, the questioning from the public because I knew face reading wasn't something that everybody knew about. So I thought this is going to help make me resilient and to be able to speak about it, you know, when people ask me those sorts of questions. Um, so I did that for about 12 months, I think, before I, before I finally was like, I think I'm done with markets now. <laughs> I think I can go do something else, <laughs> go into a clinic situation and, you know, then come over to Bali. But yeah, I must say it was like, that was a really big key point in the whole journey of my entrepreneurship for sure. So, I mean, I, I love that story and I love it because you possess this energy that's just like this, you know, I've just got to get out there and start applying it. And, you know, I, I think for those of us who might feel a little shy or reserved about putting ourselves out there, hearing that story, you know, whether it's, whether it's you're getting a market stall or you're collaborating with somebody or, you know, maybe you're putting yourself out there on social media for the first time, whatever that looks like for you, there is that matter of, of just going, this is who I am and, and just immerse, immersing yourself in that. Yeah. And so at what point did you decide to move to Bali? Because you were living in Australia. So when, did, when was that tipping point for you where you said, actually, my business and I am ready to make a transition? For sure. Um, it was about two years into my um, entrepreneur journey. So I left the nine to five. I did my train, like I'd already done my training, but dived into the face reading, worked in a clinic. And then I realized when I was working in this wellness center, you know, I was sitting in a little room that was quite small every day with uh, people that were quite depressed that didn't really want to make a shift. And then I also knew I wanted an online business because I wanted to travel. And I was kind of like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, this isn't actually 
the dream I wanted to create for myself. Um, so then I was like, okay, what, what do I do? How do I change this? And I was actually in a coaching program at the time where the lady was in Bali and, um, because Bali had never been on my radar before, you know, in Australia, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of partying and sort of stuff comes over here and I'm like, oh, that's not really my scene. Um, but she really opened my eyes up to, um, you know, how many entrepreneurs there are here, how create like a different side of Bali. And, you know, I was doing that program and then I just remember one day I was like, I got to go. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to Bali. Okay. And I didn't tell anybody. I only told my mum purely yeah. for the fact that I didn't want anyone to be influencing my decision making because I knew that I would get people going, what the hell are you doing? Like, you know, because online business then mm -hmm. wasn't as big as it is now for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so even my dad and my brother only told them two weeks out. I was like, hey, guess what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm moving. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, but, you know, we all lived around Australia as well. So it wasn't like, you know, like we're all living together or anything. Um, and yeah, and so that's how it happened. And I've never looked back since. And what was, what I still remember to this day is that flight from Australia to Bali, there was this little voice in my head that just went, you're coming home. And I was like, I've never been, I was like, all right. <laughs> like, you know, but it was like, I, it was definitely the place that I needed to come to take the next, everything to the next place, you know. You know, one thing that um, I often talk about, and I think one thing you're exemplifying is that when we're hearing or, or existing in a situation and everything in our body is just going, oh, this is just not lighting me up. You know, I'm going to this small office. I'm talking to the wrong people. I'm not lighting up. That to give ourselves permission to follow our joy current Yes. to give ourselves permission to actually walk through the open door of self-care, which for you at that time meant moving, um, can be such a huge thing. And I love what you shared about not sharing it with a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. that you actually only shared it with your mom because you knew that she would understand. Yes. Versus maybe listening to other people's stories and having that influence you in your decision. Yeah, I think that's really, it, it is a really key point because it's like, we can be very, when we get excited, particularly I think women, we love to be like, I guess what's happening, da, 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 da. And it very quickly, everything can close down when you just have one person that you love and trust go, oh, what, what are you doing that for, you know? And all they're doing is projecting their fears on you. Like it's got nothing to do what you're wanting to do, but then it can really stop you in your tracks. And actually there's an even more beautiful part of that story. Do you mind if I share? Um, so at the time my dad was in, in Brisbane, like my parents are separated um, and he'd lost his sister and, you know, he wasn't in a great place. And it was a really hard decision for me because I knew that I was part of his kind of support network at that right. time. Uh, but I did think, I was like, I've got to do this for myself. I can't stay because, you know, I know that dad's not in a great place. So I chose to go and I kid you not, six months later, he packed up his stuff. He's now living in Thailand and he is like living the life that he loves. And I was like, if I didn't make that decision, maybe everyone would just still be miserable in Australia. Like who not? like, you know, like if we don't follow our heart and what we really are here to do, it's like the ripple effect of positive action for yourself is just huge. There's always a silver lining for everybody, you know, always. And yeah. if we have that courage to, you know, it, it's incredibly powerful to be surrounded with people who follow that, that, impetus for change who who want to make that shift in their lives because it does model something different we we don't actually have to all read the same script of you have to go work in an office nine to five every day you have to earn x amount of dollars you have to do it in in this way with these people because that's what 
we're told we're good at or that's what we're told we're supposed to be. And I know in your work, you work with women and, and entrepreneurs around the world who, can you tell me a little bit about what that experience is like working with these women around the world and, and seeing, I mean, seeing that happen? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's really, really crazy. I remember the first time I did a face reading online and I was so worried about it because I was like, because with face reading, you sit fairly close together and, you know, you can feel the energy. And I'm like, via the computer, like, how's this going to work? But after that first one, I was like, it is exactly the same. Like, I really believe that through the internet, you can still feel the energy, like you can, you know, there's no separation. And that was also, that happened just before I made my decision to go to Bali as well. And I was like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and then to have worked with women, literally like from all different countries or to run webinars where you see that they're all tuning in from like all everywhere around the world. It's like, to me, that really lights me up because it's like, the work and the message is just being spread so much wider than my little local kind of area, you know? And yeah. I think this is how we're all good. This is how the message gets spread. I mean, I feel like the internet, honestly, I am so thankful for the internet. I think it is the best thing that we ever invented. Um, you know, it's got its positives and its negatives, obviously, but from a positive point of view, like this is how we're doing the interview right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's just uh, to be able to ha to reach the hearts and minds of so many people is just, it's phenomenal, you know. It's, yeah, really special. So I want to shift gears just a little bit and ask you, you know, as, as women and as women who own our own businesses, you know, I, I feel like we can kind of get caught in the trap of, the, well, if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to hustle hard and you've got to burn, you know, the candle at both ends and forget your personal life. You don't have one. And, you know, I think that there's, again, I, I talk a lot about these scripts that are out there, but there is the script, particularly for entrepreneurs, I feel, around what it takes to be successful and things that you have to sacrifice and things that you have to do in order to you know, achieve this level of success or whatever is defined as success in whatever culture you're in. And I'm wondering how you've navigated your own script against that script and how has taking care of yourself factored into that? How has self-care factored into your journey as both a woman and as an entrepreneur? Yeah, ah, oh, big time. You know, two years ago, I wouldn't have probably even done this, this interview because the world, word self-care or, so, or loving yourself, I was repelled by it. It was like, you know, I, you know, I was so driven and so like, I just want to create my vision and this is where I'm going. And uh, the thought of doing any of that, it was like, it, it's like, if that scares you, if you're listening to this and those words scare you, it's like, you need to do it. <laughs> but I also know that those people won't listen. They're going to have to learn through experience because that's exactly what happened to me. So I went through massive burnout after being in Bali for a couple of years and, you know, really doing the hustle. And I think it's important to know, like, uh, through our coaches that we have that teach us, <clears throat> like we learn so much, but it isn't always the way. So, but yeah. then we don't know what we don't know. So like there's this kind of juggle thing that kind of happens. So mm -hmm. I learned how to do business one particular way and it didn't suit me. And yeah, I really did go through a burnout. And then the burnout process, even then I still didn't learn what self-love was. Like I just knew that I had a vision. So I just, just kept going. And it's only been in the last year where I've actually thought, you know what, I just need to slow down to speed up. And that's really been my mantra for like probably the last nine months. It's like, slow down to speed up. Oh, and I love that. Yeah. Because I, 
there is an element of, in entrepreneurship of getting stuff out. It's like, just get it out. Don't be perfectionist. And I'm very good at that. I can sort of just be like, okay, I'm not going to be perfect with this. But then there comes a point where it's like uh, you, enough is enough. Like you've done that. It's like, if you really want to take things to the next level, yes, go back, revisit, review, you know, take it slow. Think about where, what you really want to create. Are you actually focusing on that or are you just keeping yourself busy with a whole lot of stuff? that isn't getting you to that space. Mm. The biggest game changer for me has been doing things, really taking notice and doing things different. So I know when my brain is most active. I know when it's not active and it's like, don't try and work when your brain's not active. Like what's the point? You're just going to get frustrated with yourself and frustrated with the whole process. And then, um, so I've changed up my schedule. I make time for self-care now in the afternoon. So I get up at four o'clock in the morning and that to some people I might be like, what? But my brain just works well. Like from four till 12, I'm in the zone. After 12, forget it. I'm in Bali. It's hot. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. Hot, you know? It's humid. Yes. Yeah. There's noise. The motorbikes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then... After shifting that up, the second thing that has really catapulted everything is I kept thinking, oh, I need to get a VA to do my social media and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I don't. I need to get someone to take me to the bigger vision. So my vision was I want to go and work in Singapore and Hong Kong and get into those markets, right? So I hired a tour manager is what I call her. And her specific job is to go and connect me to organizations to get that thing happening. Yeah. If I was to do that for myself, there is so much resistance that comes around from sending an email, like that perfection that you want from like right. getting the wording right. When you give it to somebody else, like there's no attachment to it and like everything's starting to come back in again. So yes. it's like trying to do things. If things haven't been working for you, how you've been doing it, think about shifting it up. And, but you've got to, in amongst that, I think you've got to wait a period of time because things won't happen uh, quickly. Like I always say 90 days is really like, if you want to make a change, be consistent with whatever's going on for 90 days and then review and see what kind of needs to shift from there. Um, mm -hmm. but that's, that to me is self care. And I've realized that now through doing things different, you know? Yeah. And I love that you're honoring your system. You know, I've, I've worked with a number of clients now who talk about how the, the like nine to five schedule, like it's not, it's not them and it's not how their bodies operate. And it's and so funny how entrepreneurs will bring that structure into their own life when they don't have to, because it's all we know, right? It's comfortable. It's familiar. And, and I think to your point about these transitions, you know, give yourself a, a little while to figure out, oh, what is my natural rhythm? Like when do, when does it, when do I light up? When, when is my brain fully functioning? And, and when do I want to just go take a nap? Um, yeah. 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 And to that point too, like, uh, cause I really have spent the night last 90 days changing that structure. I started with one change and then I gradually brought in other ones. So I didn't go, I'm going to get up at four and I'm going to eat well and I'm going to exercise and I'm going to meditate. Yes. Like, because otherwise it's like, it's too much. It was like, just start with one of them. And then until that gets comfortable, bring in the next one and then bring in the next one, you know? So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's fighting sort of the all or nothing. Yeah. I, I have to make all the changes now. Yeah. And if one of them fails, then I'll, you know what, then the rest of them have failed. Then, you know, just forget the whole thing. I'm just not, I'm not doing it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. There's this person who's never had experience doing that at all. Um. <laughs> Try it. It really works. I know. Cause I used to do the same thing all the time. It was right. like, right, let's get everything sorted. And then a couple of days later, it's like, whoa, total overwhelm because it's too much change at one time. Like, you know, yes. Yeah. And then, so I feel like that's a bit of personal or um, that's a bit of like the business self-care. Yeah. How is, how is self-care manifesting more outside of the work in terms of your personal life right now? Yeah. 
it's a big one because I believe yeah. that business success and personal success really run alongside each other. Yeah. So um, in my 20s, I actually had a sex and love addiction. So it's been a really big thing for me to work through that and uh, understand my neediness and understand how to unlock it and be okay with me, you know? Um, and so it's been interesting while I've been doing these other changes in my business, yes, there's been new uh, relationship things that have come up alongside that, uh, both with men, but also within friendships as well. Um, and I had the biggest lesson just recently because I met a man who um, he was so different to everyone else. So I was like, this is great. Like I'm actually, I know I'm doing my inner work. I'm attracting a new type of guy into my life. You know, mentally we were, I was just so stimulated. We'd have conversations for hours and I never really found him attractive, but it was because of this other stimulation. I was like, I'm kind of into this guy. And I, and we ended up having a conversation about it and he didn't feel the same way. And but I was like, oh, but I still really love hanging around with him. So I was like, okay, I negotiated with myself. And I was like, you know, I think we can be friends. I think we can do this. And in the end, it's like, no. And it was really hard for me because it wasn't, because it was such a different um, way. Like if he would talk about other women, I could feel myself like, you know, daggers in my gut and all these sorts of stuff. And I, in the end, I had to say, look, I don't think I can be friends with you. And it's not because you're not a nice person. It's because I'm feeling more than you're feeling for me. And I'm not honoring myself through doing that, um, which has totally broken the pattern of so many male friendships I've had in the past. And, you know, that mm -hmm. dynamic that can play out because I was also very aware that they can take the place of a relationship because it's comfortable and you have that connection, which doesn't leave the space open for the, the right guy to come in, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and that's only just been recently. And even though that whole process was hard and there was a bit of a grieving kind of process, although it wasn't that long from doing that, it was like, I could feel everything else catapulting in my life just from saying no to that one thing. Um, and even the same with friendships, uh, you know, in Ubud Bali, there is a fantastic community of women entrepreneurs here. Like we are really close knit um, and we usually meet once a week, but I've had to say no to that. Um, there's been things where, you know, I'm just not, people aren't turning up for me how I need the support at the moment. So I've just been, it's not like you have a, um, <clears throat> it's not even like there's a discussion. It's just choosing. It's just like, no, that's actually not working for me right now. I need to focus on this and I'm just focusing on this, which is so different to how I would normally operate because I'm a people pleaser. That's been my programming is people pleaser. And so to get to that point now where it's like, I can do these things. I actually don't feel about bad about doing these things. And I know it's honoring me and honoring that person on some level as well. It's, it's really, it's a game changer, big game changer. You're bringing up such an important piece of the self-care equation, I feel. Mm -hmm. And that is giving yourself permission to say no to those things that aren't serving you yeah. at whatever frequency. Yes whether it's work, whether it's friendship, whether it's family, whether it's intimate relationships. And I, you know, you and I are on the same wavelength when it's when we say no to something or someone or to a situation, you're saying yes and opening up a door for something else to come in. Yes, exactly. Because other, I think women are so good at wanting to do everything, wanting to please everyone. It's like, it's cluttered. It's so cluttered. And how can you look after yourself? How can you look after what you're creating and look after those that you really care about and want to spend time with if there's all of this busyness around everything? Like it just, it just doesn't work. And I think becoming good at saying no and like, I hear myself saying this and I heard this so many times my whole entire journey, like the six years, 
but it's so true. Like I was actually reflecting a little bit on that just the other day. I was like, I'm actually really hearing and doing the things that I've heard for so long. And once you actually start practicing it, it, it truly is a game changer. Well, and it's kind of like what you and I were talking about before we started uh, recording was, you know, and, and we, we were saying, you know, maybe it's turning 40. We're not quite sure what it is, but you know, there comes this point where you just get really comfortable knowing that you're not for everybody. Yeah. And, and that goes for, everything in your life. You know, you might not be for everybody in your family. You might not be for the person you're with at the time. You might not be, you know, you might not be for everybody in your business. Getting comfortable with that and getting comfortable with the no in that is, it's actually so incredibly liberating (laughs) and it feels so good to embody that. Yes. And You know, I also say for anybody who struggles with saying the no, you can ease into it. It, You know, no's take transitions too. So maybe it's, oh, not this time, maybe next time. Or I'm not available now. Can we look to next week? So, you know, if if saying no isn't comfortable, there are ways that you can sort of maneuver (laughs) into the no. Yeah. And even one step before that, just picking up that, oh, I should have said no then. Yes, yes. yes. I actually remember the first time I did that and it was after I did my psychosomatic training and I was like, I need to look after myself more. And it was as simple as I had, I was with my partner and my ex-partner at the time in Brisbane and he was out in the garden having a lovely time on Saturday and I looked in the kitchen, I was like, I've got to do the dishes. And all of a sudden I was like, well, I don't really have to do the dishes. Like, and, cause I started getting cranky at him. Cause I'm like, you're outside having fun. And I'm in here having to do the dishes. And I was yeah. like, I, I, rem- I so remember it. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go on the couch and I'm going to read a book. And it was like, it, I just sitting there. I don't even think I was actually reading the book. So I was just so happy. I was sitting on the couch with the book. <laughs> But it, you know, it was that first step of saying, no, I'm not going to do that thing that I, I feel I have to do because I don't like yes. the dishes aren't like clean me, you know, like <laughs> that's all the me. The will not fall apart if the <laughs> dishes sit in the, sit in the sink just a little while longer. Exactly. Exactly. So in your work, I know that you talk to entrepreneurs about honoring their system and actually tuning in to yeah. that, to that, you know, what, what am I hearing from myself? What is my body saying to me? You know, what, what are my energetic habits and patterns? Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, as you're working with women and you're talking to them about chakra philosophy and, and you're sharing your message, what self-care components filter into that work as well? Yeah. Oh, a lot actually, because yeah. now that I have, cause I only teach what I know basically. So I have seen the transition even in my coaching and mentoring through that. Um, and I do, I ask them the questions like, you know, do you know enough about yourself when you're, when you're really on and when you're off? You know, do you understand that energetics is just as important as marketing? You know, you could have the best marketing in the world, but if you send that out with fear, I don't think it's going to really do anything. That's what's happened in my experience anyway. It's like really tuning into that. And uh, the only way is by reflecting on what's kind of going on. So it's like, my, I've hit my knee or I've got a headache or I'm feeling a bit unwell or my back sore. It's like taking notice of those things instead of pushing through them, you know, mm-hmm. because it is your body bringing your attention to something. And it's like, what does that really mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly around sacral chakra. So for me in business, that's related to uh, branding and branding is much more than colors and fonts and all that stuff. It's like, how are you delivering your work? Are you enjoying how you're delivering your work? Like, at what element of creativity do you have in how you're creating your products and service? You know, I've got friends that love doing podcasts. I've been trying to get my head around podcast. I just don't do podcasts. Like I don't even listen to them. <laughs> so I'm not going to do a podcast. Like, yeah. you know, 
So, you know, really listening to like, what is, are the things that light you up in your business and focus more on, on those things. It doesn't mean that you don't have to eat the dirty sandwiches Elizabeth Gilbert calls it like, you know, sometimes you do just have to turn up and, and do the work. But if it's, if it is in a way that is more exciting for you and that you find more enjoyment in doing, I always say do that piece first, at least mm. do the, the fun stuff first and then bring in the other elements along the way, you know? Yeah. It gets the momentum going. Yeah. Cause you at least the... got to be consistent at something, just be consistent at something. And if there's that one thing that you love, so be it. And then everything else will sort of filter in like, you know, yeah. yeah. So can you walk people through the chakra system? Not everybody may be familiar with it and yeah. sort of how you combine the chakra energetic body with yeah. your business philosophy, because I, I think it's incredibly, it's an incredibly unique approach to thinking about business, but it's also an incredibly unique approach to thinking about ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very connected to listening to the emotions that you're feeling while you're creating your business. So it's basically, you can use your body as well, but I think the emotion is much more um, louder <laughs> than the body sometimes. <laughs> So with the base chakra, that's all about your foundation. So your ideal customer, your goals. Um, it can also be when you're building a team um, and also cash flow because it's all the fundamental things that you need for that business to flourish. If you're feeling overwhelmed, fear or anxiety, they're your key indicators. It's like, <clears throat> excuse me, you got to go look at that, that piece of your business. And with the base chakra, if that's not firm, nothing else, like it's like everything else is going to be wobbly if you don't have those things set. And in my experience, it's like 80% of people I'd speak to, like the startups, I say, you know, have you actually spoken to, have you interviewed your ideal client? And they're like, no. And I'm like, there's such fear around that. I know. And I, it's so interesting. It's always really, um, cause when I found out about it, I was like, well, that would make sense. Like, you know, <laughs> to go and talk to them. And so it's really, it, I guess, probably because there's a level of fear of it being your own business. You don't want to look like you don't know what you're doing. But yep. through doing the ideal customer interviews, it's funny because a lot of the time you end up with new clients because then they start understanding what you're doing and how you can help them. So it's like, it's a really important piece and something you need to keep at all the time. Um, yeah, it's not one and done. I'm no, it's no. not one and done. You've got to keep coming back to it. <laughs> and especially when your clients aren't lighting you up. So that's what the, the sacral shark is about your branding. So if you end up working with clients and you're just like, these people aren't working, this isn't working for me. I'm getting frustrated. I'm feeling resentful or um, I'm feeling guilty about, you know, it could be guilty about what you're charging. It could be guilty about receiving money, like looking at that piece of the puzzle around here as well. Um, but, you know, with your products and services, how are you feeling? Because you want to be feeling joy. You want to be feeling pleasure. You want to be feeling ecstasy. Like I always say your branding has to turn you on. Like you want to be like so turned on by your business. You can't stop talking about it. Like, yeah. you know, uh, and then that will, inf and it, <clears throat> that will affect other people in terms of how they talk about it as well. So yeah. there's that ripple effect. Um, solar plexus is your product and service. So in chakra philosophy, that's your personal identity. This is all about confidence. So my story about the face reading, I knew the more I practice it, the better I'm going to get, the more confident I'm going to become in it. So with your product and service, it's exactly the same thing. It's like, what do I need to shift? What do I need to change? And where is uh, Texas located, Melanie? Um, just short, uh, just above your belly button, between your belly button and your heart, around your diaphragm area. Because yeah. uh, the diaphragm is what pumps your energy through your body. And so it's like, if that's stuck, nothing's going to, nothing's going to go. Um, the next thing is your heart chakra. So your heart chakra is related to your uh, promotion. And I did this on purpose. Uh, because it was a lot of feedback I was getting of, I don't want to promote myself. I don't want to sell yeah. myself. I don't like selling. And I still hear it. And even I still go through these phases like, I don't want to, I'm not a natural born seller, like, you know, 
But I do know that when I talk, <clears throat> talk about my product and just share about what it is, people are attracted to it. And that's the essence of product and heart chakra. It's like, if you've got something that you know is going to benefit other people, you're doing a disservice if you aren't sharing about what that product can do, because otherwise they don't know who you are or where you are or how you can help them, basically. Um, the next one is your throat chakra, and mine's a bit rusty this morning because <laughs> I get coughing. <laughs> Uh, but this is all about your truth. So it is about communicating in your business. It's about knowing who you're speaking to and, and what it is that they want. But there's a deeper why to the work that we're doing. And, you know, I've touched briefly on, you know, I had this sex and love addiction in my 20s. That is actually the core root of how all of this started. And it's taken me six years to really come out and start speaking about it because wow. I had yeah. a lot of shame around it still. So, you know, really knowing what your truth is and what you need to clear around that. And if it may not always connect with your business, like it's not always essential, uh, but if there is a story behind it of how you are doing, especially in the coaching world, I mean, there's a reason why. Right? There's a reason why. <laughs> that story is like, uh, like I was speaking at a conference, a summit, a global consciousness summit on Wednesday. Yes. It was the first time I had shared that story with like a hundred people in the room that I didn't know. And I didn't even go into a lot of depth about it. It was very kind of surface level. I had so many women come up to me afterwards and say, I resonate with that story. I, I hear you. Can you help me with, you know, navigating this piece? Nice. Um, so your truth, don't feel like one, you're the only one with that story. And two, that it's not worth sharing because if you share it, you'll be surprised at how many people actually resonate with what has gone on for you, you know, and we can feel it's interesting because we can feel so isolated by what's happened, but in sharing it, there's so much magic that actually comes through with that. Um, your brow chakra is all about leadership. So this is how we connect to our intuition. So this is listening to my body, listening to my emotions, getting that nudge, like, I get nudges all the time and I've learned to really listen to it. And it's been very helpful to be outside of the Western world to discover what those nudges really mm. feel like. Mm. So if you can't feel it, start taking yourself out of your normal environment and just try and tune in a little bit of what a yes is and what a no is and what fear is and what resilient, uh, not resilience, um, uh, resistance mm. is, you know, cause there's a difference. <laughs> Um, and then the last one is the crown chakra, which is all related to your vision, you know, and your legacy basically of, you know, what it is that you're really here to do and, and how that unfolds. So through knowing the different emotions that you're feeling, it will pinpoint to that chakra, which then will indicate what area of your business you need to look at. Mm. Um, and it actually works with the body too, because I've done case studies with this. I had a woman who had a sore elbow and I'm like, well, your elbow is related to your solar plexus. And we looked into it and another company had come in with the same product as her and all of, you know, she'd lost her confidence. Right. And I was like, it's all indicating we need to look at this part of your business. So it still amazes me how it works, to be honest. I'm like, but it works, you know, it's like, listen to our bodies, listen to our emotions, listen to where we need to look at in our business. It totally works. And you know, I, I still go back to the materials mm -hmm. that you shared with us in the, in the teacher training. I, you know, I still come back and I go, Oh, right. That's, that's what I need that's to look at. Some, <laughs> some love, care and focus right now, you know, and, yeah. and it truly is, it truly is about tuning in yeah. so that we can show up, you know, and, and even if you aren't starting your own business, this is just good work to do. It's good work. It's self care work. You know, listening to ourselves is actually a form of self care yes. and, and having the courage to actually listen and then take action on what we hear or not take action as the case may be. Um, yes. it, it just, it's incredibly empowering to step into that space of, of inner wisdom. Yeah. That, and that it, it is sacred leadership. Like if you want to talk sacred leadership, it's tuning in, you know, yeah. 
like one type of leadership is like a I'm going to rule the world. The other one is I'm going to listen to myself and that's going to bring out my gifts and my wisdom yes. to spread love and light really. Yes. You know? yeah. And I love the way you work because you, you're so good at bringing people to that place of, Oh, that's what it is. You know, you're, I, I love the way you work because it's not, you actually don't provide the answer. You enable and empower those you work with to find the answers for themselves because it's already there. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about how people might work with you if they're, if they're interested in, in learning more? I know that you have some online stuff. You've got some in-person work that's happening. So how would somebody engage with you if they wanted to work with Melanie? Yeah. Well, it's a, yeah, there is a few ways. Um, I always think my face reading sessions is a really good place to start because I get to know you and then you get to know yourself on a really deep level quite quickly. It's powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. <laughs> it, it is, Melanie doing a face reading with you is like having somebody look into the depths of your soul. <laughs> I remember, sorry, I'm totally, I'm totally going off track, but I remember the face reading session with you and just like having this massive meeting of myself and part of me just cracked open and realizing, whoa, I have been showing up for everyone else and it's not what I want to be doing. So everybody, the power of a face reading session with Melanie, I am telling you, if you do anything for yourself, entrepreneur, not an entrepreneur, never want to start a business, just do this for yourself because it is incredibly insightful and it will open up parts of yourself that you didn't even know needed to be accessed. Sorry, I just had to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But it's, it is very true because if we don't know, I mean, that's why I wanted to do this work because it reflected everything back at me and I was like, whoa, I'm not honoring myself on any level. Like this was when I first did the training. So <clears throat> it that most definitely is for entrepreneurs, but also for those who aren't because it is about self-care. We talk about the masculine and feminine and how that's playing out. People are into that at the moment and it's like a hot topic and it's, um, you can really see that. So I always say the face reading is the first place. Um, after that, I have a chakra philosophy course level one at the moment. That's all about emotional intelligence. So teaching you about the different emotions and what chakras they're related to. So you can start practicing and teaching yourself to really listen to it and know what you need to look at. Um, it doesn't necessarily go into the business aspects, but it definitely goes into the different areas of your life. So nice. this is what I need to look at here. Um, outside of that, yeah, I'm basically running uh, workshops and facilitating talks and all sorts of things anywhere, really. Like at the moment, I'm in Bali. I'm going to be in Singapore this month as well. Um, but I do have plans to go to Australia and, you know, like if you're interested and you know of somewhere that would facilitate something, get in touch with me because honestly, I've got people that can help me make things happen. Um, and I do love the face to face. I think, you know, I do a face reading workshop that goes for a day um, where everybody can read each other, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, you know, we really spend a whole day just exploring like, what this face reading thing is all about. So yeah, so that's basically what I've got on at the moment. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And how would somebody get in touch with you to book a session, to email you with questions? How, how do we find out more about you? Yeah, you go directly to my website, which is www.seedtosoul.com.au. Um, on there, it's got my contact page. You can contact me through there. You can actually book a face reading directly straight through the page or go into my calendar. Um, and with the face reading, you also get a recording. So we record it and then you can take it away with you so you can listen to it later because there is a lot of information that happens within that hour. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's the best place. Otherwise, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram, YouTube and LinkedIn all under Melanie Middags. <laughs> I am going to include links to all of Melanie's 
online stuff, all of her social media presence, her website, all of that down below. So be sure to check out the description because that's where you can access everything there. Yeah. Melanie, I am... Have we finished already? I want to keep talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I am so grateful for you on so many different levels. You were instrumental in me actually taking the plunge to start my own businesses. You are somebody who gives from the heart. I know that you are personally invested in this work. I know that you walk your talk, like I said, that you don't separate yourself from the work that you are sharing with others. And just thank you for always showing up in service and thank you for showing up for yourself as well. Oh, thank you. And it, you know, I know, I remember when we first met and I remember that training. I mean, of course I remember you and I have always just seen such drive, but also heart centered energy from you. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so happy to see how you're flourishing and how things are going for you right now too, both in your business, but also in your personal life as well. Like I just think, yeah, I, I love what I'm seeing. So Aww, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, please get in touch with Melanie. You will not regret it get a face reading with this woman. She is phenomenal. And Melanie, thank you again. Stay ignited out there, everybody. And we will see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this conversation that I had with Melanie. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What were your takeaways from what we discussed today? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified when I release a new video each Thursday. If you know somebody who's walking their path of purpose, needs a little bit of inspiration, and maybe a dose of self-care, be sure to share this video with them. As I mentioned, I'm going to be including all of Melanie's contact information in the description below. Do not hesitate to reach out to her. She is magic. And that face reading session I had, I'm not kidding changed my life. I know you want one too. Stay ignited out there. I will see you soon. Bye.